right, it's Luke here, The Shoulder Guy, and uh, welcome back to theshoulderguy.com. Now, I've got a request from a reader of this blog, and uh, they downloaded the free report, The Shoulder Report, and they were interested in finding out a little bit more about how they could help their son. Their son is a baseball pitcher. Uh, they're a little league player, and uh, he's actually ended up with a shoulder injury. After pitching for the last couple of months, he's pitching quite fast, quite hard, uh, he plays first base and third base, but predominantly he does a lot of pitching. And now his shoulder is sore and it's starting to develop some crepitus within that shoulder too, so some noise within the joint. He wanted to know what can I do, how can I help my son? So I want to put this little video together just to give you a few pointers uh, about uh, pitching, especially with young players. Uh, we need to look potentially at a, at a few things to really help those players stay in the game uh, so we don't uh, abuse those young little players who are often very talented and we get very excited about pushing them to, uh, to perform at, at a very high level. So this is where we want to start. Now overall, the biggest problem in Little League uh, pitching and in Little League baseball is overuse and this is common amongst sports that require the arm to come above shoulder height, swimming for example, but especially in the throwing athlete. Overuse is a huge problem. Now we want to use rest and the Little League Baseball uh, organisation has put together some pitch count rules. So you can't pitch over a certain amount of pitches and if you do then you need to take some time off. So we need to rest. Okay, We don't want to be continually overusing the shoulder. We need to rest, but my point is, well, what can we do? Can we do something that's relative in terms of rest? We don't complete a mobilization, but can we take some relative rest? Can we do some other activity that might not involve the shoulder directly, but it might be actually involved in play indirectly? So you might have your young child involved in another sport that's complementary, uh, but it doesn't always involve the overhead use of the arm because we want to link the arm with the rest of the body as much as we can. So playing and getting involved in an, another sport or doing activities that are relative or related uh, but not specific to, to baseball or throwing would be really important. So that's something to think about. Complete rest and I think a mobilization completely is a problem. We need to make sure that that arm and that shoulder is integrated with the rest of the body during the down times as well. Now what we find in young athletes and young players, there's a couple of things that happen to them. Most of them have made some pretty good adaptations to using their arm above shoulder height. Usually one is related to the range of motion. They have a nice excessive range of external rotation and they may have what we call humeral retroversion. So that humerus is actually rotated and retroverted back into this position. So in that cocking phase, they've got the range of motion that they need to get into that position to pitch fast. And the second thing they've usually got is good mechanics. They've got their body and their arm and their shoulder working beautifully. Okay, so some of these people that adapt really well to pitching and throwing, uh, they've got these two aspects. They've got good range of motion. They've been pitching well before puberty. So they've got this history of pitching and they've got the biomechanics to then go through that so they can get that energy transfer through their body. So these are pitches that have adapted well. And you'll find some of those out there. You'll be able to see someone who looks very natural. They can pitch quite hard. Uh, they're pitching quite fast for their age. And if we transfer their pitching in terms of what they can do, say, at age 14, to what they can do potentially at a major league level, then they're up around about the 90, 95 mile per hour mark. So they're using their arm tremendously against some really big forces. But they're doing well because they've got good range of motion. They've got good biomechanics. Okay, the other way to go is we go into dysfunction. Okay, so there's something wrong. The mechanics of the shoulder aren't perfect. Uh, the range of motion might not be there. Okay, there might be a lack uh, of pelvic stability, their inability to get the hips through and hip rotation so they can't transfer the energy uh, through their body. So what we want to do in the next part of this little video is look at some of the dysfunctions that happen that might be contributing to a painful shoulder in a young pitcher and we want to look at uh, some of the things that we can do and suggest in terms of the rehabilitation. Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back. We discussed the adaptations and also the dysfunction that can happen in the young athlete's shoulder when they're throwing a baseball. Now, it's very interesting that some of these adaptations will take place after one episode. Okay, so you can get acute adaptations 
even after one episode of throwing some pitches, you're going to get some acute musculotendinous adaptations. Okay, so the muscles are going to start to try and adapt to the forces that you've applied upon them. The tendons will start to adapt as well. And some of these changes can last for up to 24 hours. So even after one episode of pitching, we need to be careful that some adaptations will start to take place and that those adaptations, when we continue to pitch, will accumulate over the whole season. So we see changes in baseball pitches over a season and it usually starts and it can start within the first episode of pitching. So some of the big adaptations we do see are restrictions and reductions in range of motion and we can see a reduction in their cross body range of motion, their internal rotation range of motion and then also the ability for them to upwardly rotate their shoulder blade so that when they're in this position, this cocking position, they actually lack the upward rotation to get into that position properly. So some of these changes can happen over the season and they may be happening to, to your child as they're pitching out there in Little League. So let's look at some of the aspects of the rehabilitation that we want to pay attention to. Okay. Now, as we said before, relative rest is really important. We want to make sure that we're not only uh, taking time out from the excessive use of that arm, but do something that's relative. Don't take complete rest out. We might be able to do an activity that's relative. Uh, we have to really consider the pitch count rules. They're the things that are really guiding uh, your child in terms of how many pitches they're going to do and then how much rest they need to take at the end of that. So consider the pitch count rules. Now range of motion, as we said before, is an adaptation that takes place in quality pitches, but also it can be in a negative way as well. So we see those adaptations, those restrictions in range of motion. So a gentle flexibility program can be something that's really important. Now we need to make sure that uh, your child is, doesn't have an unstable shoulder and now we're going to stretch on top of that. So we've got to be very careful about stretching. But if there is some gentle tightness within that shoulder, then potentially stretching that shoulder out can really help the mobility of that shoulder, which can increase the, uh, the overall function of your shoulder. Now, biomechanics is so important. And what we're looking for is any energy leaks. Where does energy flow out of the system? So as your child is going through that whole pitching motion, where is energy being leaked out? It can be leaked out through a lack of hip rotation. They're not getting the hip drive they need. They can't, can't transfer the energy from the ground up through their body, out through their shoulder blade and into the hand to apply the load to the pitch to get it down there fast enough. Okay, so when you get energy leaks, you're going to have to work harder somewhere along that whole energy chain and potentially it can be up around that shoulder and that's where they're struggling. So biomechanics is so important. You might have to go down and get a pitching coach to look at your child. Get some specialist input here because we need to look at the biomechanics of that whole pitching mechanical uh, movement and then look where things are going wrong because some gentle uh, tweaks here and there can make a huge difference. So employ uh, a pitching coach because that can make some big, big changes to your child's mechanics. Now in uh, relation to mechanics, the scapula is so important. That thing called the shoulder blade is so important in terms of preventing energy leaks and transferring energy up into the hand. So looking at the scapula is so important. Your child might actually have some downwardly rotated scapula positions as they're coming through that cocking phase and in through the release. So we know that the scapula potentially can change and we've seen some evidence of that in some of the studies. So the scapula is so important. So getting a physiotherapist or a physical therapist to look at the scapular position uh, will be really important. Now muscle timing and proprioception. What's your child's awareness like? Can they feel uh, when their muscles are working? Are they someone who is a bit floppy and uh, sloppy? They, they actually can't hold themselves upright. They may lack the awareness of what it feels like to maintain control. So this is called proprioception. So you might actually have to uh, get a physiotherapist to design a little program that improves energy transfer, that improves their position or joint position sense with the arm up above shoulder height. So this is all about getting muscles to fire off in the right sequences. That's certainly related to proper shoulder blade mechanics, uh, but also the awareness of what it feels like to do a good pitch, what it feels like when things aren't right. This is the proprioceptive part of it.
Now the next level we're looking at the kinetic chain. Again we're thinking about transferring energy so whether we can actually get that whole kinetic chain and energy chain working to deliver that baseball as effectively and as fast as possible. So the kinetic chain, so we're thinking about the ground reaction force, we're thinking about the lower limbs, pelvic stability, up through the shoulder blade, we're thinking about the mechanics of the baseball uh, throw, all of that has to come together at the right time to deliver that baseball. Okay, so the kinetic chain is so important. Now, at the end of all this, once we've considered, we've taken some relative rest, we've looked at the biomechanics, we've looked at range of motion, we've uh, looked at a pitching coach to make sure that our biomechanics are really good, and we've looked at some specific things around the shoulder in terms of the shoulder blade, range of motion, and muscle timing and control, then we want to go back and do a progressive throwing program. We want to start out with a nice short toss going through medium toss and eventually building up to a long toss. So we've got to get your child slowly back into that throwing program, but we're not overloading, we're not overuse, overusing that arm. We're taking plenty of rest, we're starting out with a nice short toss and progressively building that uh, out into long toss over the longest time possible. And we need to make sure that we're doing quality throws. It's not all about quantity, we want to make sure that we're doing quality throws as your child is going through that throwing program. Now some of the resources are on uh, this website and below this video right now so you can link to the, uh, the Little League Handbook which is a fantastic resource which will give you an example of a uh, throwing program and uh, there's also a PowerPoint presentation below this too looking at how to prevent injury uh, in the Little League. There's also the pitch count rules below this video which you can access in a PDF format. Listen, I really hope this helps you and certainly helps your child out there. So if they're out there throwing, they're throwing a baseball, they're throwing a cricket ball, they're using their arm above shoulder height, considering some of these um, little tips will be very important to keep your child in the game and to keep them injury free.